Hello and welcome to Ukrainian Flames, a special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, UNGO, Euro-Atlantic Course and Analytical Center of Ukrainian Catholic University. My name is Victoria Zabian. I'm head of the UCMC Press Center. Please like, share this video and uh, subscribe our channel to stay tuned. And today we will talk about uh, why actions of Russia and Ukraine may and should be qualified as genocide of the Ukrainian people. More and more world leaders agree with this statement and there is less and less doubt about it in the international community after what they saw in Bucha. In this video, we have collected comments from experts, human rights activists, local officials and activists who will explain why it is appropriate today to talk about the genocide of the Ukrainian people in the context of Russian full-scale invasion. And we will start our episode with the comment by Alexandra Matvichuk, head of the Center for Civil Liberties, one of the well-known human rights organizations in Ukraine and abroad. She predicts that there will be a lot of discussions concerning whether it is happening in Ukraine, is genocide or not, but uh, she underlines uh, that the appropriate investigation must be started, because genocide it was one of the hardest crimes. Genocide is the most serious crime among international crimes. That's why it demands a very high standard of proof. When we speak about genocide, first of all, we speak about special intent to destroy completely or partially some concrete national, racial, ethnic or religious groups. So if we want to prove that all atrocities which Russian troops committed against Ukrainian civilians is genocide, we have, first of all, to prove this genocidical intent. And in this regard, it's very interesting to examine Russian propaganda, because Russian propaganda has turned completely genocidical. Russian propaganda publicly urged that Ukrainian culture has to be destroyed, that Ukrainian language has to be destroyed, that Ukrainian nation has no right to exist at all. I can predict a very hard and long debate whether we have crime or genocide in Ukraine or not, but at least this question has to be raised and investigation has to start it. And the international court will say a final words in this discussion. We asked Maxim Butkevich, human rights activist, to comment the situation from the point of view of international law. Why what is happening in Ukraine should be called genocide? Let's take a look. It's more and more often that uh, the current war, which is waged by Russian Federation against Ukraine, is characterized as genocidal war. Uh, and it is not a figure of speech. Uh, more and more people, not only in Ukraine, but around the world, are uh, convinced that they are witnessing uh, not less than attempt of genocide of Ukrainian people uh, co uh, committed by Russian leadership, Russian armed forces, together with the Russian propaganda machine and uh, all Russian institutions which are currently controlled by the Russian state. Uh, let's just uh, remind ourselves uh, what is usually meant by genocide. In legal terms, we have the United Nations Convention on uh, Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, and uh, it talks about uh, destruction or intent to destruct uh, as the whole or in part of a certain uh, national, ethnic, religious group. Uh, and this is basically what we are witnessing uh, when uh, Russian armed forces indiscriminately bomb Ukrainian cities, uh, including places where there are and there cannot be any military objects, uh, any military infrastructure, uh, bombing uh, uh, sleeping areas, living districts, uh, nurseries, schools. Uh, it looks like the targets are selected when they are selected only because they are Ukrainian cities and they are uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, territories 
and there are Ukrainian nationals living there who do not want to surrender to Russian aggression. Uh, also, the convention mentions uh, forcible transfer of uh, particularly children from one group to another. And this is also what we witnessed when specifically uh, we look at the uh, eastern areas of Ukraine, parts of Donetsk and Luhansk regions, uh, where we had several cases of uh, Ukrainian children being, uh, quote, evacuated, unquote, to Russia on the pretext of helping them or saving them, but basically transferring them uh, to Russia and making them Russian children. Uh, there is no other word describing these actions uh, than uh, a word genocide. So uh, genocide is not a figure of speech in this current war. Uh, tragically, unfortunately, it is one of the most uh, obvious, most media-wise, uh, and closest to uh, global north genocides or attempts of genocide of the 21st century. Expert and researcher Alexei Harang underlines that Russian officials' messages and Russian propaganda analysis shows that the call for the elimination of Ukrainians as a nation was always present in Russian rhetoric and it was pretty much supported by Russian society. I will leave the point of discussion about the differentiation between, uh, between war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide to the lawyers and criminologists. But we can see that it was, you know, in this uh, Russian propaganda, uh, the call for this genocide, de facto. I, there, uh, there's a lot of many other examples, like uh, Dmitry Medvedev, former president, of Russia, and now he's deputy head of the Council of National Security of Russia. So he stated that Ukrainians, with all history about Ukraine and Ukrainian identity, is a fake. So again, this is basically, if you imagine these soldiers who for decade at least were in this propaganda, you can imagine how they uh, how they would behave, how they would behave against civilians. And here we need to talk about the responsibility of the Russian society as well, because we know the figures are not. Uh, it's not. It, it's difficult to uh, estimate how truthful are the figures, but we know that a large number of uh, Russian society is supporting is supporting this aggressive war. They share these views about denazification of Ukraine. These days, Ukrainian partners around the world have been making statements uh, that they recognize Russia's actions in Ukraine as genocide. Also, several world leaders, such as the president of France, have surprised Ukrainians with their attitude toward Russian atrocities and crimes in Ukraine. Most civilized nations can be expected to be united in their treatment of Russian aggression as genocide. We have powerful comment on the topic from Yuhan Chuli. Ladies and gentlemen, can the atrocities committed by Russia in Ukraine since February 24, 2022 be called genocide. Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, also known as the Genocide Convention, stipulates that genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such, namely by one, killing members of the group, two, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, three, deliberately inflicting on the group 
conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, or four, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. On March 16, 2022, the International Court of Justice in The Hague rendered an interim judgment in the case of Ukraine versus Russian Federation, declaring first that Ukraine and the Russian Federation are both parties to the Genocide Convention, and then stating, and I quote, the court considers that the civilian population affected by the present conflict is extremely vulnerable. The special military operation being conducted by the Russian Federation has resulted in numerous civilian deaths and injuries. It has also caused significant material damage, including the destruction of buildings and infrastructure. Attacks are ongoing and are creating increasingly difficult living conditions for the civilian population. Many persons have no access to the most basic foodstuffs, potable water, electricity, essential medicines, or heating. A very large number of people are attempting to flee from the most affected cities under extremely insecure conditions. End of quote. On that basis, the International Court of Justice indicated some provisional measures, including that, and I quote, the Russian Federation shall immediately suspend the military operations that it commenced on February 24, 2022, in the territory of Ukraine, end of quote. Russia blatantly violated this judgment as Russian forces relentlessly pursue their vicious bombardments of the civilian population and infrastructure of Ukraine including hospitals and schools, and commit numerous war crimes by killing, raping, torturing, and starving Ukraine's civilian population, and forcibly deporting children from the Donbass region to Russia. If need be, one should only recall the recent horrific images from Bucha and Kramatorsk. On April 12, 2022, President Joe Biden told the American people, your family budget, your ability to fill up your tank, none of it should hinge on whether a dictator declares war and commits genocide a half a world away. This was the first time since Russia launched its genocidal war against Ukraine, that the President of the United States has stated that the atrocities being uncovered in Ukraine qualify as genocide. The U.S. President later explained that, I called it genocide because it's become clearer and clearer that Putin is just trying to wipe out even the idea of being Ukrainian. The evidence is mounting, end of quote. Putin and Russian forces are indeed trying to wipe out even the idea of being Ukrainian, which stems from Putin's denial of the very existence of the Ukrainian people as a whole. For instance, on July 12, 2021, in an article titled On the Historical Unity of Russians and Ukrainians, Putin wrote, When I was asked about Russian-Ukrainian relations, I said that Russians and Ukrainians were one people, a single whole. These words were not driven by some short-term considerations or prompted by the current political context. It is what I have said on numerous occasions and what I firmly believe." End of quote. Incredibly, according to Putin's version of history, the name Ukraine was used more often in the meaning of the old Russian word Okraina or periphery, 
referring to various border territories. And the word Ukrainian originally referred to frontier guards who protected the external borders. End of quote. All this damning evidence demonstrates that, at the very least, Russia is deliberately inflicting on Ukrainians conditions of life calculated to bring about their physical destruction in whole or in part. And that is genocide according to the UN Genocide Convention. And we are continuing to get more exclusive comments for our project from regional experts, local officials and people who were witnesses of the atrocities that Russians committed in Ukrainian cities, towns and villages. Here is the emotional message of Oleg Buzun, head of the Kruti community in Chernihiv Oblast, in the following video. We understand that Russia today does not на знищення України і української нації. Варто зазначити, що до цього Росія готувалася завжди, століттями готувалася до таких жахливих дій стосовно української держави і українського народу. Варто, мабуть, згадати лише Петра і Катерину, згадати Сталіна і сьогодні Путіна, який намагається у нелюдський спосіб знищувати українські міста і села, знищувати нашу критичну інфраструктуру, вбивати, гвалтувати, викрадати людей, руйнувати їхні долі. І у такий спосіб, не шкодуючи в містах навіть ні садочки, ні школи, ні лікарні, практично проводять. Росія в Україні сьогодні політику геноциду. Ми розраховуємо на те, що весь цивілізований світ, ну, можливо, крім таких путінських посіпак, як Орбан, дасть оцінку діям, військовим діям РФ на території України. Хотілося б у ці військові дні коли наша держава бореться за свою волю і незалежність, сказати всім по ту сторону військового фронту, що вам не здасться, ніколи не вдасться зламати нашу волю, мрію до перемоги, нашу незалежність і свободолюбивість. Україна завжди була і буде країною, яка в якій не можуть жити раби, країною, яка мріє тільки про свою незалежність і не підкорюється московському тирану. Павло Кузьменко, mayor of Ochtyrka, which is in Sumy Oblast, says that he sees evidences of genocide in Russia army's actions uh, from his perspective. In his comment to our project, he said that invaders, together with critical infrastructure, are destroying the livelihoods of Ukrainians. People find themselves in such conditions uh, that death awaits them, if not from the explosion, then from hunger or cold. War is systematic, not chaotic, but mainly directed on our drones, taught us where to build the sky, я думаю, що в нас місто наше не виключення, так як і багато міст України, де е, мешкають люди, які зрадники, хай їх не багато, але все одно зрадники. Вони е, указували, де ці зерно склади, де ці склади із е, СМ, ну, бензином, е, соляр, ну, без топливом, дизельним пальним, е, для того, щоб у в Ахтирському районі, а далі в Україні, на Ахтирці вони відпрацювали цю схему знищення всієї, всього забезпечення, яке б потрібно було для посівної. І вже десь на 7-8 день у своїх відео 
звертаючись до наших мешканців Охтирки і до українців, я сказав, що дійсно планується Володомор, який буде не сьогодні, а буде через рік чи через півроку, коли нам потрібно буде збирати врожай, а ми його не посіяли. Е, також е, ворог цілеспрямовано знищував всю критичну інфраструктуру, він знищував е, електромережі. Електромережі е, по усіх областях, де е, велися бойові дії. Те, що зараз відбувається по всій країні, е, це говорить, що ворог е, вбивав не тільки тіла, а він е, намагався вбити наш нашу волю, наш дух, наші душі, наші здобутки незалежності, здобутки нашої волі, здобутки наших, нашої свободи в нашій країні. Що можна ще говорити? Що ворог розстрілював полонни, евакуаційні колони, ворог розстрілював дітей, розстрілював вагітних жінок, і е, це те, що заборонено, не заборонено, а е, ну, взагалі не вкладається, е, воно заборонено будь-що, але воно не вкладається у е, свідомості ну, будь-якої цивілізованої людини. Viktor Semenov from Mariupol communicates with many people who managed to escape the city and all they all talk about the beatings, tortures, filtration camps and bloody murders in the city committed by Russian occupiers. After journalists and the international community saw Bucha and Borodyanka, they only started talking about the possible genocide if they saw Mariupol with their own eyes where no one has access now, they would hate everything Russian with all their hearts. Details in the following video. Hi there, my name is Viktor Semenov and I'm a former assistant to the local representative in the city of Mariupol. So I have a lot of friends there and I'm trying to be in touch with them. And we know it's a disaster in the city of Mariupol, but I would like to use the word genocide because it's more appropriate. And all we know about the massacres in the Bucha or Bin cities that are north in Kyiv. But how do we know that? We know that only because the Russian forces was kicked off and a lot of international journalists, the people who we can trust, they visited the cities and pictured all the terrible things there. But in Mariupol city, which is surrounded by Russian forces by months, no one is allowed to come in from the international journalists. So we know only about the words by the evidence of the people who was locked to left the city. Uh, city is uh, under everyday bombings, everyday shellings, and the people unfortunately dies on their streets, on their houses, on their shelters, under the bombings and in, this, in their hometown. And uh, they are staying there with a little of food, with a little of water, they're starving there because no, there, there was no uh, humanitarian convoy with the food or medicaments was allowed to come in from the Ukrainian territory. It was attempts, everyday attempts for the last months to provide these supplies from the citizens, but it was not allowed by the Russians. See, the people that live in the city, they're hostages of the Russians and they're... Uh, do nothing good from the people living there and people are trying to run out from the city and there are a lot of uh, citizens just lying on the ground uh, on the streets because they was shot and for example I have a personal story with my friend she's uh, named Maria Vdovichenko it's a young girl and she worked in the church before the war started but later she was forced to live for two or three weeks uh, in the vault, in the shelter, with her family, with an overcrowded shelter, and with a little food and water, and her father and mother, they are old people. But one day they were lucky to leave the city by their car. And on the way from the city, they were stopped on the filtration camp because the Russians created uh, these checkpoints to not allow for people to leave the city. And they was forced to stay 
for the two days in the field, in the dark, cold territory, uh, before they was allowed to come into this checkpoint. And inside the checkpoint, she saw the torture and beatings of the people. Uh, and especially, uh, she felt it on herself. The Russian soldier beat this girl on her back. And for example, her father was uh, beaten inside the building because Russians uh, saw her contacts uh, is empty on her phone and after these beatings uh, he get uh, blind or almost blind and now he's getting some uh, medical help in the Ukrainian territory and her mother she had a disease with uh, her legs and it was also a torture for, for her after the living on this territory with no help and also this Russian soldier told her that uh, what happened if I cut your uh, ear? And uh, such a question. So why do we think it's not a genocide? It's a genocide. It's a terrible story when the Russians don't like the Ukrainian by its own, by its Ukrainian language, by its nationality, by its political position, and they're trying to kill our people and destroy our freedom and democracy. And I think we should stop it, and all the world. And Ukrainians especially are trying to stop it. And we have to stop it before we will have much more evidences of terrible things like in Bucha or Irpin or Marupol nowadays. Thank you. And in the end of our episode, we would like to show you very emotional appeal of the writer and journalist from the city of Bucha to the whole world. She is one of the few people who can still talk about the horror that Russians brought to this small and once cozy town near Kyiv. Let's take a look. Мені дуже важко говорити про те, що відбувається в нашій країні. Я, прокидаючись щоранку, думаю, що то страшний пекельний сон, який мені наснився, я прокинулася з цього сну. Так думають мільйони українців сьогодні. Тому що нам самим складно повірити в те, що у 21 столітті в центрі Європи таке можливо. Але це, на жаль, Дійсність, наша дійсність, в якій ми живемо. І так, наші міста не просто руйнують якісь окремі локації, там, де перебувають військові аеропорти, військові містечка, а руйнують усе. Будинки, в яких люди живуть, цивільні. Дитячі садочки, школи, бібліотеки, будинки культури, підприємства, в яких Люди працюють і що живить нашу економіку. Склади з продуктами, самі магазини, дороги, сади, навіть стайню конюшню з конями і ту. От в Гостомелі спалили живцем. І це не один приклад того звірства, яке сьогодні відбувається на нашій землі. Я не маю жодних слів, щоб передати те, що ми відчуваємо, яке горе на нашій землі. Я не маю таких слів, щоб передати, яку порожнечу і біль несуть зараз в наших душах мільйони людей. І скільки часу нам ще потрібно буде для того, щоб подолати цей біль. Можливо, ніколи. До кінця життя. Це буде неможливо тим людям, які втратили своїх дітей, втратили своїх чоловіків, дружин, батьків, друзів. Таких людей сьогодні дуже багато. Іде війна не просто між військовими, знищує просто наш народ, цивільних людей, дітей, жінок. Це потрібно зупинити будь-якими засобами війні. Не бути в Україні. Сьогодні це нонсенс. Цього не повинно бути. 
You've been watching Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, NGO Euro Atlantic Course and Analytical Center of Ukrainian Catholic University. If you like this video, please subscribe our channel to stay tuned. In description to this episode, you can find the information about how personally you can help Ukraine against Russian aggression. Everything is gonna be Ukraine.